This is a quick presentation on fundamentals of power system protection. Um, hopefully you have a, a good, clear, clear view of what's um, going on here in terms of the audio. Um, essentially we run these uh, presentations every week and um, some of the nuts and bolts of electrical power system protection. Um, it consists of about 80 slides. I'm not going to go through every slide, but I am going to give you a, a quick rundown on some of the key elements, but you're welcome to go through the slides in your own time. Um, the topics that we're going to cover are need for protection, characteristics, characteristics components of a protection system, faults and protection, earthing, that old chestnut which we've covered before, and then a quick discussion about protective devices, and um, some discussion about automation at the end of the slides. <coughs> Um, this is all presented by Steve Mackay at EIT. Um, we do these as a public service. Obviously, we're hoping that you get a pretty good view of um, what we offer in terms of courses. So, first thing is, what is protection? It's to avoid the um, undesirable effects of something when something goes wrong. The idea is that you have three things that are protected. Obviously, people. Um, equipment and obviously the system, trying to keep the system stable if you've got a very large interconnected power supply. And particularly today, with uh, solar power, wind power, and all the um, dynamics of the uh, power station, coal based or gas turbine, stability is quite important. And the idea is to protect you from shocks, arc flash, collapse in the electrical power supply. And the idea is to split off the um, unhealthy, the, the part of the system that's had a problem, a fault, from the healthy part as quickly as possible without um, causing any further disruption to your power supply. The reason why we have to do that is because you demand power on a continuous basis without interruptions, and it's obviously um, very important to detect failures. And um, the protective equipment or protective relay is used to detect, discriminate, and isolate faulty equipment. As I said, I'm not going to go through every slide, but I want to go through some of the key elements of power system protection. So the role is to keep continuous supply, minimize damage, and obviously anything that goes wrong, repair costs, um, and obviously probably safety of personnel. Probably safety of personnel, I would say, is number one. Equipment comes secondary to people. Some of the attributes of a um, power system protection system, obviously, selectivity. Uh, you want to just select the particular part of the network, the faulty item, isolate that. Stability, try and keep your system continuously operating. I'm thinking particularly of a very complex power system. Uh, sensitivity, obviously, you want to operate uh, with the smallest values of the fault. Um, but obviously, you don't want to be overly sensitive either. You don't want to disrupt power unnecessary. And finally, speed is critical. So quicker you operate when you decide that this is critical to operate, the better for the system. So speed is important. Um, obviously, as I said earlier, speed is important to minimize damage. Keep your production downtime down. Prevent any undue thermal or magnetic overstressing. Keep voltage depressions as short as possible. And obviously, try and avoid electric shock. And recently, of interest is obviously arc flash, which has become quite a major issue. The typical components are, of a power system are for the protection is measurement of electrical parameters, sensing abnormal behavior. Actuating device for isolation, isolating, enunciating to everyone, powering, and enabling. So those are the uh, critical components. Possible faults could be ranged from cable faults. Um, cable faults, especially old cables. Transformer faults, hook holes, relay. Buzz bar faults. Um, Extra high voltage substations, buzz volts can be quite traumatic. 
um, other issues are types of faults could be um, protection system must work for all the types of faults meant to operate and um, I'll see a different number of different um, faults that occur. And obviously, bear in mind, um, you look at the designated parameter, and current is not the only parameter you look at. There's a lot of other potential faults that you detect. So typical faults versus active versus passive are active, solid, high fault currents, danger of uh, personnel, high stressing and natural components, digital network voltage, and faults spreading to other phases. So uh, that's a solid fault. Um, recipient is something which is building up, partial discharge currents, and eventually the recipient fault develops into a solid fault. And then finally, passive faults really they're still faults, but they're not really considered real faults. Overheating of insulation, over voltage, under frequency, and power swings, which could damage the uh, mechanical components of the generator, especially. So here's types of three phase faults. Good old three phase diagram. You've got a um, star network here, star um, connection down to Earth, uh, your central point's Earth. Uh, you've got A, which is phase to ground, B, phase to phase, it's between phases, phase, um, C is phase to phase to ground, D is three phase, and finally E is three phase to ground, so it consists of a lot. And finally, a few other types, phase to pilot, uh, and then fat and pilot to ground. So those are the other um, ones. But generally, these, as we point out, are in mines. So we're not going to sit on further here. So magnitude of fault currents, obviously, good old Ohm's law. What restricts the fault current is the impedance. And um, ground currents can obviously be limited by grounding a neutral source and choosing a suitable grounding method. Um, just bear in mind, phase fault currents cannot be controlled. Transient faults don't damage the insulation permanently. So, for example, three foot branches on overhead line, reclosing will be successful. Permanent, you get a particular problem, for example, with a cable. Um, it's broken down permanently. You need to do repairs to reduce the uh, problem. You avoid the problem, and that means store insulation levels. So if you reclose on that fault, even after a period of time, until you've actually dealt with the primary problem, you are going to get a fault again. So types of faults are phase faults, earth faults. Uh, the consequence are heavy currents, long outage times. Heavy currents and earth bonding give rise to high touch potentials, which are dangerous. And large fault currents are more hazardous in igniting gases. Old hazardous areas problems. Phase segregation, separate phases far apart, resistance grounding, lower earth fault currents. Potential solutions. Earth faults, uh, most faults in systems are due to insulation failures. <coughs> Current or flow depends on the type of system earthing adopted and the current flow will influence touch potential and the time of protection operation. If you have an unearthed, no current except through the system capacitance. If it's solidly earthed, very high current, but only limited by the earth circuit impedance. Impedance earthing mainly depend on the neutral impedance. So when it's greater than impedance, the lower the current. Tuned earth, extremely low current. So Faults current can vary. Um, obviously, we've actually looked at the effect of electricity on humans, um, and obviously that idea of safety is absolutely paramount. And there's four main factors determining the seriousness of shock. Part of the current flow, so the 
crosses between arms, across your heart, you've got a potential problem. If it's across your foot, there's no hassle. Well, apart from doing the foot, magnitude of the current, time of the current flows, and the body's electrical resistance at that time. So, really, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. The science uh, can give you quite a good um, indicator here. Yeah. Um, here's a typical current tingle of one milliamp. They go 10 milliamps, spasm 60 milliamps, 60 to 100 milliamps. Well, sorry, it shows over. So, again, um, current flow can vary uh, the damage done to your body. So, resistance of the human body, resistance um, does vary. And you can see the um, voltage and um, the um, potential problem. So if you've got dry skin, very moist skin, you'll see the um, voltage uh, sensitivity can change. So earth fault loop resistance, impedance of the earth fault loop current. Um, comprises the following starting at the point of fault. This is a earth fault loop resistance, circuit protective conductor, consumer's earthing terminal, metallic earth return, path through the earth's neutral point, transformer winding, and the phase conducting the transformer to the point of the fault. Next slide. Earth loop resistance. This obviously, as we discussed, Governs the determines how much uh, the uh, fault current will be in the flow. Um, low voltage systems, you have a flow through the earth return path, can create low uh, fault currents, and obviously um, avoid problems by using TN type connections. Um, verify by measurement of the loop resistance and match fault current to the protective device sensitivity. Neutral CT, Earth's standby earth fault scheme, core balance, CT scheme. So here you look at the um, earth leakage. Um, you're looking for a balance there, and obviously for an imbalance. Summation CT scheme for wire feeders. Another approach. Obviously, four wire systems can cause problems due to unbalance, zero sequence currents, triple and harmonics. Obviously, ensure correct connections of CTs to avoid false trips. Multiple sources, incorrect relay pickup, neutral for avoidance of parallel return paths. So, protective devices are used for sensing and isolating faulty circuits, basic types, direct acting fuses, which we're familiar with. Mounted integrally with breakers, release, and external protection, protective relay devices. So, it uses the most basic. The slides here give a pretty good idea. <clears throat> Typical fuses, characteristics, fusing factor, energy let through. Use the application of steady loads, protect, normally protect against overload as well as short circuit or fluctuating loads. Benefits, fault detector and interrupter. Biggest virtue is obviously speed and limiting fault energy. Problem with fuses obviously because of what they are, they can only detect overcurrents, faults, not overloads. And they have a fixed current time characteristic obviously because they bit of metal. Circuit breakers and protective devices are covered in great detail in these slides. So I'm just going to circuit breakers with releases, which we mentioned as one of the categories. Uh, typical device highlights, built in current sensors, etc. Digital protection features. Compact size, widely adjustable characteristics. Obviously, the way to go is digital, and obviously, you've got enunciation, remote communications, and you get true RMS.
current sensing, which you don't get necessarily with the others. Visual protection. Here are pictures of what they look like. Features, long time delay, short delay, instantaneous settings, pretty flexible. Protection curves that you get. And so these all cover on the slides. I'm not going to waste time. Extended protection. Other common features are RMS current sensing. Two types of relays, electromagnetic and static. And obviously the main one today is numerical or microprocessor based. Computer based, I guess. Timeline of relay development here is just sort of relay. Um, the idea today is that everything is um, microprocessor, computer based. Don't worry about the old types that you won't see much around, except on old plants, old substations. <laughs> Characteristics of the relay in terms of time, current. IDMT relay, current setting, time multiplier setting. Digital relay advantages are not worth going to because they obviously the only way you're going to operate today is using a numerical relay. A few schematics of what they look like, static relay features. Big thing about relays today is that you've got this ability to connect into the wider system. So it's not an isolated device any longer. And you also get um, IEDs, which is basically just a intelligent remote um, device for reporting um, fault. And protection, control, monitoring, metering, communications. This is where the 61850 protocol plays a significant part in the communication from these devices. So using the IC61850 and perhaps over a um, DMP3 link, if it's a widely scattered thing. So that's a quick run through. Sorry, it took a bit longer than I anticipated, but a quick run through on uh, power system protection. But please go through the size. If you have any questions, please shout and we'll be delighted to respond and give you more detail. Thank you very much.